Hi, my name is uh, Vincent Duol from Aquaculture Band Limited, uh, where we do fish farming, basically fish breeding and uh, aggregation and sale of fingerlings, design and development of systems, as well as offer extension services. And today, with me here, I have my colleague, and give her the chance to introduce herself. Yes. yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Abby. Abre Hat, Gavre Georgis, Gavre Metin is my name, Abi short name. I came from Rwanda, but originally from Tigray, Ethiopia. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Abi. Uh, in this, I believe, uh, in this uh, agriculture space, uh, I'd be interested to know about your journey, especially being a, a young woman from Rwanda and with a business space within African region. What has your journey been? as a woman African in the agribusiness space. Can you repeat that question and uh, add your volume somehow by the way? Okay, uh, sorry. So for you, Abby, as a young woman in the agribusiness space, how's your journey been in this space, uh, getting to your get through? Yeah. Uh, normally, as I've said before, I came from Tigray, the northern part of Ethiopia, and mm -hmm. I moved to Rwanda in 2018. Okay. And uh, the mission was to study my master's degree in IoT. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, when Ethiopia started the war in Tigray in 2020, mm -hmm. November, uh, life was like a hell to me. So it was a very traumatic journey wow. where I was forced to stop my uh, thesis, mm -hmm. my master's degree thesis, and uh, being located f at home for almost six months. At that time you are still in Ethiopia? Or I was in still in Rwanda. Oh, okay. That time I was supposed to be graduated and go back to Ethiopia. Okay. But when Ethiopia started the war in uh, November 2020, I couldn't fly. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't even enter. Imagine it was a genocide that was happening there. So in the meantime, I have seen uh, a baby, like probably two years old baby. Mm -hmm. His body was totally burned because there was civil target bombardment and okay. no medical support. But uh, painfully, he was crying for his hunger, like, oh, I'm hungry, oh, I'm hungry. Imagine he's a baby and the mother is surrounding him. Uh -huh. It was the most painful moment for me in my life, and I cried as if, like, someone died, oh. loudly. And the people who were in the apartment where I was living gathered and... They just was about to broke my door and the, the, the window. So that was the moment I start talking the pain I had inside mm -hmm. physically to people because I was traumatized, I was hating people even. Mm -hmm. So when I share my phone to them, they were so broken. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough that I was in Rwanda because I felt at home mm -hmm. there was people to share my pain. Mm -hmm. And telling them what was happening to me and like uh, I was 37 kilo because eating and living a normal life was like a crime to me. Okay. There was feeling of guilty because I know that my people are starved there. Yeah. So they told me like, look Abby at yourself. You're just about to die even. How could you help others, others yeah. if you don't help yourself? Mm -hmm. So that was a, a waking up moment to me. Okay. And then I started making a research like... If people had to survive, they have to eat. Yeah, and exactly. then uh -huh. out of computer science in bachelor degree, IoT in master's degree, okay. uh, I shifted into agriculture and started researching fast-growing vegetables, which can grow indoor within a locally available raw, raw materials, and that can grow quickly, mm -hmm. like quickly, and then you just have to have nutrition within them. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot of options, but mushroom was the best. Oh. It was like the best. And I first introduced with mushroom for the first time in my life. Mm -hmm. I started buying, cooking, and then visiting farmers. Mm -hmm. Then I say, if I'm going to influence others, I have to be the role model, more role model, okay. an example, practically by myself. So that was how I started uh, agribusiness. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't an easy journey normally, but I had a painful and very critical cause that pushed me to be here today.
Yeah. And that is very interesting journey uh, and uh, with a, a back story that inspired you and uh, getting to switch for, first of all from what you are doing, uh, IoT and everything then to agriculture, that's a big switch. <laughs> it's a big switch, yeah. Yes, and uh, part of this journey, uh, there's something I'm trying to understand. Uh, during all this time, was it something that you kept on pushing on alone or how did you manage to do oh, all wow. this and to make this kind of big switch? For Very you? interesting yeah. question. Yeah. So I have to go back to where when I started, it was 2021 in June. Yeah. Uh, I had no money. I was a student <laughs> and uh, the scholarship was ended like in September. Mm -hmm. But because you remember 2020 was the, the year of COVID. Yes. They yes. gave us an extension to do our research, but mm -hmm. no money. In between the, the genocide war started already. You lock it at home. You have no contact with your family members. I don't know who died in the who is surviving from my family even. And you see horrific videos and photos. So they were coming from home. Yes, just online we okay. get some few videos like it's a piece of the iceberg actually. Okay. But you don't need to meet anyone. I don't need to meet with anyone until the day that I was awake by my Rwandan uh, friends, neighbors. Yeah. So no money to start, uh -huh. but that word, like you cannot help yourself, I mean help your people if you don't help yourself. We are the survivors of genocide, but we leave it to be the legacy of our parents. That was my moral. No money, no family members, no information about whereabouts of my family and my people. But I could tell you the first one year it was painful. Like very painful i don't have only the business pain but life pain from my people already from social yeah. pain yes okay. and starting without money wasn't easy so i was trying to get credit from friends from family member which i have a sister uh, outside i started and i failed i could say that because uh, we're gonna talk more about this because <laughs> yeah, about like this. at the beginning <laughs> uh -huh. everything is painful uh -huh. Uh, I started with a credit yeah. and uh, there was no return, okay? Then I had to get more credit. From a bank or a friend? No, or? bank couldn't give you a credit or a loan at the beginning because you don't have a collateral. Okay. For me, uh -huh. I was a student in Rwanda. Uh -huh. I had no any like tangible asset, so no loan from the bank, from a friend. Luckily enough, I had a brother, a very humble brother, which I couldn't forget. He came from Ethiopia to Rwanda because okay. Tigrayans were evacuated from every business. So that was a chance to me. He saw my efforts and he asked me, what do you need to do? Where do you want to go next? Okay. And it was a golden opportunity to me. We needed to expand, but challenges came and he supported me to continue on what I was doing. Then that time I got a, a credit to, from him and I needed to start my own seed production. Yeah. Unfortunately, where young farmers, especially young entrepreneurs, should be very careful, choose the right person to be partnered with. The money he gave me was like eaten by another person who supplied the seed to me. Uh -huh. It was unfortunate and painful moment where my friends, people they know me, they were saying, Abby, why are you even continuing this one? Because I always cry. Mm -hmm. Someone trusted you, gave mm -hmm. you money. Yeah. You have a dream and you have a cause back there mm -hmm. which you need to move quickly and save people. And you are just stuck in here. It was painful. I cry every time. Mm -hmm. Luckily enough, back to the question. <laughs> While marketing my products in the local market, I met a Rwandan, I mean Burundian lady. She had a cafe. You met Burundian one? Burundian lady, she owned a cafe at that time. Okay. I went there to, to market my mushroom. Uh -huh. Okay. That was in Burundi or in Rwanda? In Rwanda. Oh. So I just introduced myself and I told her why I started mushroom and then she was surprised. Like, and I questioned myself, why is she surprised? I didn't thought like I was doing meaningful work. Mm -hmm. Because what I was doing was on how to save the people. I didn't thought it even as a big thing. Mm -hmm. She told me, Abby, you have such an inspirational uh, uh, cause 
and I have to connect you with someone. She connected me with a doctor that works with a uh, social enterprise. And then she heard about my story. We had an appointment. Then she linked up me to a link where there was a competition for young people into tourism. That was November, I mean September, October, November 2022. Uh -huh. Then uh, I already got the link. Uh -huh. I had to apply. It, was, uh, it wasn't easy because I was traumatized. The mind was already lost. I, I started to apply. Uh -huh. I quit because there were too many questions. Okay. And then I stopped. Then I remember what they say. They believed in me. Like, if those people believed in me and they continue inspiring me, why do I have to give up? Abi, continue, continue feeling. <laughs> so I applied. Uh -huh. Then they screened like 25, no, 100 people out of something. We were screened and then went for interview. Pitching. The first pitching. It is even in my Facebook page. <laughs> then we become among the 25 people to get the access for coaching for finance. I got a coaching which was very amazing uh, that enterprise called Tourism Inc. in Rwanda mm -hmm. uh, and uh, or ESP under ESP. Yeah. We had a journey of six months. They coached us and then they give us a prototyping money which is $1,400. That money, $1,400. I didn't even spend a coin out of the business. All of it used wisely in the business. In the business and yeah. I had a very amazing and supportive coach. Mm -hmm. When I have a problem, I have to call to her. No, mm -hmm. no lying, no hiding. I tell her what it is and then she guides me. Then I, I want to be among the 10 out of the 25 to become the top five now mm -hmm. after the evaluation. Then we had a final pitch. We won five people out of that. Wow. They gave us a grant. Wow. That is the reason why I am here today. I paid my loan. I started value addition. There is a chips which I will show you later actually. We starting processing into powder, into dry mushroom, into a chips of mushroom which is totally organic where we are expecting to export to Kenya. Uh -huh. uh, and that was the cause where I am here today, but without support, mm -hmm. as young entrepreneur, I couldn't be here because there was a moment where I don't have even money to pay a rent and I joined to my friend to live with them. Mm -hmm. It was hard. So this is the journey in short. And that is a very interesting journey, mm -hmm. uh, Abby. And uh, while on that, uh, to just talking about networking, because uh, you brought the aspect of networking and the mentorship and uh, that's something that cuts across even for, for us. It was a changing point, just who you meet one time, then the conversation you have, then later on, just learn it opportunity that changes your whole life and everything. Exactly. It's the same story for me. Exactly. <laughs> I in, uh, met someone probably in 20, it was in 20, 21. 20. 21. Yeah, uh, we exchanged contact, then this person makes a call to me later on in 2022, then links me up, uh, actually at that time, uh, linked me up with an organization, then you came and evaluated our business, and gave us our first funding. Amazing. Yes, and uh, from there we just took off to where we are. And with the mentorship and support from uh, like uh, FAO and other organizations, uh, we keep moving. And it's Terrible. the same, same story. And I think uh, one thing that I find unique about uh, you and uh, your team, uh, like Rwanda youth, I'd like to know about uh, I believe you have an association yes. and yes. beyond just networking, meeting people at an individual. There's Perfect. something unique about you guys that you managed to come together as the young people within your country and like you're making things move for you. Uh, what, what can you share with that? What can we learn from you? Can you share? There is a lot to learn from Rwanda actually. Rwanda is such a blessed, beautiful country. Uh -huh. That's all what I can say. Okay. Even the moment I started Mushroom, there was an association for young people in agriculture oh. called Yalta. Mm -hmm. They were advocating for uh, young Rwandans mm -hmm. to go for visit in farmers. Oh. That was when the, the genocide was happening and when I found mushroom was the best. I told them, look, I'm not Rwandese, 
Uh-huh. But I wanna go with you and I can cover my expenses by myself. I had no even money. <laughs> <laughs> so they allowed me. Uh-huh. I didn't even pay the coin. They covered all my expenses. Uh-huh. It is a blessing. Okay. And Rwanda advocates for youth in agriculture so much. The government itself inspires, encourages, motivates young people to be in agriculture. So there's a deliberate, uh, deliberate support from the exactly. government. Exactly, so my support, oh, okay. so my support. So for me, where I am here today, yeah. uh, I'm as a, a member of Rwanda News in Agriculture Forum okay. called RIAF. RIAF, okay. Yes, it advocates for young entrepreneurs in agriculture so much. You would get their links in Facebook, in uh, Twitter, in uh, YouTube, and they help us as much as possible. Uh, like the networking today we are here because i am member of ria oh, and okay. uh, wonderfully ria has a cooperation or partnership with fao mm-hmm. it is hard for me to go to fao immediately and mm-hmm. achieve my goal okay. but going through ria mm-hmm. is very easy and they are very helpful like the door is always open and they help you from their heart it is not like uh, an association sitting there and, no they are young people like us, and they share the vision. That would be like a very good example to other African countries. Uh, there in the discussion, mm-hmm. there were so many questions from Kenya coming out, like, how can I get this certificate? How To do that yes. alone is hard. <laughs> yeah. It's very hard. But me, I go to FAO to do something, and then it was FAO who suggested me to contact Ria. Mm-hmm. From the day I knew Riaf, I got so many opportunities, linkers, networkers, exhibitionists, so many opportunities. So an association that inspires young entrepreneurs in agriculture is very critical in each country. And that's how we can even keep pushing while uh, we face very difficult challenges that potentially could stop our journey here. Uh, so are there like, uh, that's uh, very interesting. and. Uh, I hope that's something uh, for us, even for Kenya, should be able to uh, do get organize ourselves into an association like that and be able to push the agenda that we have. But for you, I'd be interested to know, like uh, under Riaf, for you as a Abi, what has it, what have you gained from it? Uh, Very good question. And yeah. yes, uh, in Riaf, you get uh, different uh, types of supporters. Yeah. Mainly when you are a farmer uh, and a member of RIAF, you yes. get to all opportunities, possible opportunities, whether they are links for uh, applying to fund competition or other. Just I may not get the information myself. Yeah. They grab the opportunities which are related to us and they share in our WhatsApp group. Yeah. And then I have to apply. That will be my responsibility. Okay. The simplest thing. Secondly, there is an exhibition organized locally by partnering RIAF with FAO. It's called Buy From Yos. It is an initiation that uh, calls the community to buy from the Yos. Okay? So you build your local market within through the urban... Uh, exactly, oh, within okay. local market. Uh-huh. And when there are uh, exhibitions out of the country, uh-huh. they have to partner with uh, FAO. FAO funds uh, RIAF members and uh-huh. we go to exhibitions, to networking opportunities like we are we are doing here in Nairobi today okay. and this gives you so much opportunity network is a power True. money <laughs> is just temporary uh-huh. network has long lasting opportunity it is a power so we gain a lot we gain a lot and when you give up the inspiration they give you like friendly talking yeah. it, for me it's like beyond everything because I know I'm not in my country mm-hmm. and I feel safe, I feel at home, I feel supported mm-hmm. where there is no one uh, aside to me, mm-hmm. okay? So there are so many uh, benefits this weekend, but those are some I could mention. Yeah, I think uh, from, even from what you have said and uh, with the theme of uh, the Youth Connect already, you can feel uh, you move from your country to a new country and you feel at home. There's already the aspect of uh, being borderless Africa. Because anywhere you are, you're feeling at home. Right now we are in Kenya. We're having a conversation trying to, uh, and almost our issues are similar, and trying to break into uh, these various markets as well. So I think uh, that's something that is very important for us. And from here on, I think uh, 
we'll be discussing a lot and just getting to understand way just beyond what you've told me here. Yeah. And uh, even for me in aquaculture space, there's a lot of disjointment uh, among, especially among the young people and what they want, because uh, we struggle a lot to get the young people to uh, to get into this field and also to express themselves. Because when you meet them individually, people tell you what they want, mm. but you they expect there is the aspect of uh, you are the leader, go and say it. But there is no like uh, that uh, kind of a body that protects you, because you go as an individual. Whoever you are going to will see you as an individual. So that's why I'm looking at Riaf as something uh, that is very key. It is very yeah. key. Uh, you know, we as Africans, we do have this attitude like agriculture is for those illiterate people, yeah. for uh, all the people, like for our parents. Mm -hmm. No. Like, <laughs> we cannot secure food, okay, mm -hmm. if young people don't join their handles and modernize African agriculture. Uh -huh. So asking me back, uh, like, what I am doing now is, the dream is to integrate my technological profession, mm -hmm. because I did computer science bachelor, I was in, agri mm -hmm. in a master's, uh -huh. into agriculture, modernizing agriculture. Yeah. And to do that, it's not easy. You need some power that could help you, mm -hmm. some partners that can support you, and having such associations will make your voice to be heard easily and shortly because when you go alone it's just like a, a long journey you don't have money you don't have network a lot of things and you cannot achieve that alone and my perfect advice as a young farmer uh -huh. you could start that one you could start that association and you can achieve a lot of things within a short period of time instead of going to fao by yourself mm -hmm. just join the form for all farmers in uh, in Kenya, and then you can even inspire more farmers yeah. from Kenya. More, I mean, young people to join agriculture because if you are not changed, your brother even cannot be engaged into agriculture. Because I I got this example from my home. Uh -huh. My I have my younger brothers. Like this farming, it seems like joke to them. Yeah, it true. is true also. Yeah, because there is so much attitude change which is needed mm -hmm. in the ground mm -hmm. and when we change I, I i i i can assure you they will believe they will trust in us and then they will join and association togetherness is the power that we have to show them mm -hmm. thank you so much for the insight and uh i don't know if uh, there's anything more to add to that uh, and with that i say thank you and encourage more young people to get into uh, this association, especially for us as Kenyans, to get uh, to adopt uh, one voice and an organization that we can use to represent ourselves. And to you, uh, Abby, thank you. And uh, you have any what to add on? Uh, you are very welcome. And uh, you have both the mushroom chips. I want to ask you, <laughs> how was it? Uh, because Actually, you... it was very good. I, that was the, my first time to taste the mushroom. Yeah. I, I before that, I'd not tasted mushroom before, but I'd seen them, and. Uh, the slimy feel that they have, I, 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 don't, I didn't like that. So until today, that was the first time I actually took a mushroom and tasted it. And they were very nice. I had That's a friend saying some. the same <laughs> thing. Thank yeah. you so much. So, yeah, so like when you are together, you achieve a lot. And yeah. uh, thank you. Thank you so much thank for everything. So